Hello! Uh, I'm starting a new project today. I'm going to transform my garden shed into a giant camera and take a bunch of pictures with it. Uh, I'm going to share a variety of different processes that I use when working with these kind of cameras, uh, as well as some of the build and the setup and the mechanics of the thing and, and how it works. So, yeah, here we go. First things first. Clean out the shed. That's better. So I'm going to extend the shed a little bit. I'm going to bring the front out um, just to give myself a little bit more space to work with inside and also to allow myself to project a bigger image onto the back wall. Um, if it's too thin, then obviously I've not got a lot of space to work with. So the lens is going to be here at the front and that board at the back there is what's going to hold the paper. <laughs> And here's my door. I'm currently blacking out the shed, so it's just about covering up all of those light leaks. So all of these little gaps you can see where light's coming in, just making sure all of them are completely covered. And here we are in our blacked out shed. Um, I used a bunch of old photo paper bags, some cardboard, some offcuts of timber, a bit of material, um, loads of gaffer tape, of course. Um, so we should find now, if I turn off this light, that we have a pitch black space to work in. I'm all set up in the dark room now. So I've got my developer stop and fix. Up here I have my lights. So I've got a normal white light and my safe light. These are LED work lights basically, so you can pick these up from hardware stores uh, and they're really helpful when you're working in places like this, i.e. where you've got no mains electricity because they're battery chargeable and they last for ages. The other thing I use quite a lot in the dark room is one of these. It's a bike light head torch. So I've got my white light and my safe light. And the great thing about this is wherever you look, the light follows you. And here's my lens attached to the front of the shed camera. This is an old aerial military reconnaissance lens I picked up online. Um, the great thing about this lens is um, A, it projects a really nice big image circle, but also this one in particular has quite a fast aperture. It's a 5.6, which is a little bit faster than some of my other processor lenses that I often use, um, which is really helpful when your subject is moving quite a lot because it allows you to have a faster shutter speed. Here I have my shutter. This is from an old 4 by 5 inch Sinar camera, um, but it works really well on these large lenses. Um, you can normally, I would just sort of open and close the shutter, um, just create a kind of cat flap style um, shutter using a bit of cardboard or something like that. Um, but this makes it a little bit more accurate and precise. So I can cock the lens and expose. Just to the left of the lens here, I've got a little peephole. This is quite handy. It means I can see what's happening outside. <laughs> um, that's me. Um, whilst I'm compo when I'm composing the picture. The handy thing about this hole is you can look through here while your paper's out and your lens is closed. Uh, and then when the subject is looking at the lens, I quite often sort of knock on the wall to grab their attention. Uh, then you can make your exposure. And this is what I use to project the image onto and hold the paper. It's a large magnetic whiteboard that I found in a skip. Um, and I've just built a kind of basic frame for it, um, which means I can move it back and forward to focus. Uh, and the great thing about using a whiteboard, especially a magnetic one, is obviously the image projects really nicely onto it, but you can use the magnet to hold the paper. So this is a sort of frame that I made also out of something I found in a skip. Uh, and this can move around the board. I can choose my composition, place it there, close down the lens, drop the paper in behind it so it comes down through here and make my exposure. So the first picture we're going to take is of my wonderful daughter, B. Uh, we're using a bit of Pippa Pig here to keep her still. You okay, B? No, transfixed. So if I go inside and I close the door behind me, there she is projected onto our screen at the back. Now what I'm going to do is get out a piece of paper, um, but I need to close down the lens before I do that. 
the paper's in place, so now I make my exposure. Now I take my paper out of here and put it into the developer. Hopefully we should see an image start to appear. There she is. That's been in there for about two minutes, so now we need to put it into the stop. Not easy doing this with one hand in a confined space, but we'll manage. So about 30 seconds in here. And now into the fix. And about a minute in here. And now we can look at it in the light. And there we have our paper negative. And now I want to take my fixed print outside and get it into the wash. I'm going to want to rinse it for a couple of minutes, get all those chemicals off it. So chuck it under here. It's clean. Here's my paper negative, all rinsed and clean. And now it's time to make a positive print from this. And um, we're back in the dark room. Uh, there's our paper negative. Uh, so now to make the contact print to create the positive, we need to firstly go to red light and then get out a fresh piece of photographic paper and place that down on the floor. Now I take my negative and place it face down on top of the other piece of fresh unexposed paper. I'm just going to let it drip a little bit first, get some of that water off and I place it down on top of here. Now I need to make my exposure so I'm just going to use the torch from this old phone. One, two, three. And then take this print, put it back in the wash and take the fresh piece of paper and put it into the developer. And we should hopefully start to see positive print coming through. There it is. So a couple of minutes in here and then into the stop for 30 seconds and then into the fix and we can have a look at it in the light. Our print's been in the fixer now for a couple of minutes, so we can take it outside and have a look at it in the light. I'm going to take another picture now, but this time we're going to use a slightly different material. Um, I'm going to use a direct positive paper. So this stuff uses the same process um, that the normal negative paper uses. So develop a stop and fix in the dark room. Um, but at the end of the process, you get a direct positive image. So it means you can skip the contact printing phase. The disadvantages are it's a bit more expensive and it's a lot harder to work with, but when you get it right, it's absolutely incredible. You get these beautiful, delicate, intricate, one-of-a-kind photographic prints. So let's have a play with that. And here's what I'm going to photograph. It's a rather generic and obvious still life, I'm afraid, but it will do for demonstration purposes. So if we come back inside the camera and shut the door. And see the image we're going to take.
I'm all set up to take the picture now. So I've got my lens there projecting my image onto the screen, chemicals ready on the shelves. So I'm gonna close down the lens, get a piece of paper out, put it into the frame and then make an exposure. Now the paper's in the developer here and you can start to see a positive image coming through. That print's now been through the dev stop and fix and is in the wash, so we can take it outside and have a look. Next up, we're going to take some pictures in colour using a reversal process that I've been working on recently. Um, this is by far the most intricate and complicated uh, of the ways that I make photographs. Um, there's lots of stuff that you need to take into account to do with the filtering of the light, colour balance, temperature of chemicals, uh, among many other things. Um, so I'm obviously not going to go into all those details here because it gets really nerdy. Um, but I'm going to attempt to take some colour reversal photographs using the shed camera uh, and developing in my back garden. Here we go. So here's my beautiful daughter and partner all set up to photograph. Uh, we head inside. <laughs> Now the first few steps of this process um, require complete darkness, so I'm not going to be able to use a red light and therefore film any of this. Um, but what's going to happen in a moment is I'm going to shut down the lens, get out my paper and place it there on the board, make an exposure and then develop that picture in the pitch black inside the shed here. And then the few steps after that I can do in daylight, so I'll pick up from there in a moment. This is the exposure that I've just made in the shed and what it looks like you're seeing here is a black and white negative but what's going to happen very shortly is it's going to transform into a colour positive. This is normal colour darkroom paper um, developing in RA4 chemistry. Uh, uh, as I said this is a really complicated and intricate process so I'm not going to go into all the details about it here. Uh, I hope to make a separate video about this in the future. There's something really exciting about this process, the fact that a colour positive image is emerging out of a black and white negative and that it's happening in daylight as well. It kind of messes with our understanding of what a photographic print should do. And also the quality of the pictures is quite magical. The way the colour registers within the print and the particular texture of the image is quite unique. So I'll let this develop a bit more and then on to the next step. And now the print is in the Blix. So the Blix is basically a mixture of bleach and fixer, which is obviously going to fix our image. And here's our fully developed colour reversal print. Now I'm going to attempt to take a photograph of my lovely neighbours uh, over this fence here, um, keeping our safe social distance, of course. Okay, give us a wave. <laughs> 
I'm going to take this picture on the direct positive paper again, so it's going to be exactly the same process as I used before. Three, two, one, and relax. So I've just made the exposure onto the direct positive paper, and it's currently in the developer. Hopefully, we should see a positive image starting to come through. And there's our positive print and developer. So this now goes into the stop and fix, um, same as the normal negative paper, and then we'll go and look at it in the light. And here is our print in the wash. So now we can take this outside and look at it in the light. The last thing I'm going to play around with today is using some homemade developer to develop our pictures. Um, so I've become quite interested recently in finding alternatives to some of the quite toxic chemistry that I have to use in a lot of these processes. Uh, and one of these alternatives is caffeinol. So caffeinol is basically homemade developer. It works for paper and film. And you make it out of stuff that you'll either have lying around the house or if you don't, you can pick them up at your local supermarket and it's a lot more environmentally friendly, it's more sustainable, it's cheaper, uh, you can pour it down the sink as opposed to having to dispose of it safely like you should do with all other chemistry. Um, and you get some really interesting effects um, with this, it has a particular kind of quality to the images it produces. So let's have a go. Caffeinol is made up of soda crystals, coffee granules and vitamin C powder. The salt shown here is for a homemade fixer, but um, we're going to skip that bit today. I do have another video online somewhere that talks through uh, this process in a lot more detail. So if anyone is interested, they can search that out. Um, but today we're going to rush through the creation of the caffeinol so we can get on to making some pictures with it. To make our caffeinol then, we need eight teaspoons of coffee and give that a stir and four teaspoons of soda crystals also known as washing soda and give that a stir and then our vitamin C so I've ground up a bunch of vitamin C tablets because I didn't have any vitamin C powder um, that's what most people advise you using but this seems to work fine I'm just going to put this into a little bit of boiling water just so it dissolves properly, just a drop in there before I add it to the main mix. And that's all going into 500 millilitres of water. And there it is. I'm going to add my caffeinol the developing tray. Stinks this stuff by the way so just be prepared for that. And here's our final setup. So this part of the garden's in shade now so I've brought a reflector in to bounce some light back onto the subject. I'm going to shoot this in exactly the same way that I did the other direct positive pictures. So I'll close down the lens, get out the paper, make an exposure and then we can develop it in our caffeinol and see what we get. And we process this exactly the same as the last one. So I'm taking my piece of paper out of the frame, and placing it over here into developer. Caffeinol developer does take a fair bit longer. So normally with a normal print, normal photographic paper, two minutes, um, direct positive paper, a little bit longer, especially if it's a bit old, um, this can take, well, I don't know, we'll see how we get on five minutes or so, I reckon. That's about enough time now. It's been about six or seven minutes. Um, it's all a bit trial and error with um, with this stuff, depending on your solutions and your concentrations and the paper you're using, etc. Um, but let's see what we get with this. So stop, fix, and we'll have a look at it in the light. And here's our caffeinol developed print in the wash, which we can now have a look at outside.
you can see in this picture that there's this really nice sepia tone to the image. Um, that's from the coffee staining the paper. Um, but I think it's something you can really embrace with this process. Just for comparison, here's the same picture taken on the same paper, um, but developed in normal developer. You can see it's a little bit higher contrast as well, actually. Um, when you see them together, you can really see the difference. Thank you. 